Hello everyone, this is Dino Don here again with a little update on my project, my Stan Myers water fuel cell. Okay, the last video I made, uh, I was using these higher turn choke coils on my setup. They're about 2,000 turns, and these here are heavier gauge wire at uh, 200 turns. I was looking to get a see what kind of difference I can get out of the cell. Uh, now this experiment I'm doing now, you can see I have my scope probes attached directly to the cell or across it. So uh, before my test I was connecting the ground clip to this negative connection here and showing you a, basically an AC sine wave on the scope. Okay, right now you see my scope trace is at the very bottom of the screen. I'm only on a 1 volts per division. Okay, now plug in my scope probe and you'll see the trace change. If I get her on there, there she goes. Okay, so I went up about one volt. I'm only at one volt per division. So what that means is I have one volt of charge across my cell. Okay, now I've already tuned the tuned into a frequency on the scope or on my cell, and I have my gating turned on and this one turned on. So here's my signal now. That's off. That's already at two volts. So that brings me up to three and a half, close to four volts on this trace. All right, <clears throat> and the primary frequencies are these real fine pulses on the screen, and then the gating kicks on, turns off. So the pulses are when the gate is on and when they're off. So it's it's actually doing a a step charge staircase type effect there, but again, only three or four volts. Now this is what happens if I turn my gate frequency off. So you can see the effect that the gating has on the charging potential of the cell. Now there's still about two and a half volts and it's barely, and if I adjust the frequency, I mean it doesn't do anything but pretty much make it worse. So if I turn the gating back on. Now <clears throat> I was able to get this exact same wave using the higher turn choke coils. Uh, you can see I'm putting in 12 volts, running 340 milliamps at this point. Now before running it with you know the 7800 volts on there, you could not see, it never made any bubbles. And as you can see there, there's a real fine trace of bubbles coming out. And if you look down inside, you can see some bubbles accumulating. And eventually they'll pop through and come out. There you go. So before, at resonance of basically 20,000 hertz, it wasn't doing anything. Now, with these smaller choke coils with a lot smaller capacitance and uh, Henry's on it, the old choke coil, these choke coils I wrote down, had uh, 8.6 Henry's at 2,000 turns, 2.9 nanofarads of capacitance. Now the 200 turn choke coils, it drops from 8.6 Henry's all the way down to 213 millihenries, and now we're at 118 nanofarads instead of 2.9. So big change. So now with this coil set, if I actually was to tune into the AC waveform resonance, you would find uh, we'd be clear up over 280,000 hertz. So, so now that's kind of where I'm at. What I'm the conclusion I'm kind of getting to is that it looks like we probably need to get some energy pulses current hitting the cell in order to, to amplify these signals. Now if I turn this way down and retune it, I can get a little more pulse, a little more uh, higher voltage on it. You know, but pretty much that's about as high as it goes, 4 volts and 12 volts in. <clears throat> But uh, that's kind of where I'm at. But I'm thinking it doesn't matter where I tune this frequency. If I keep going higher and higher, take her up, take her up. There's 20,000 hertz range. It doesn't change very much. So put it back in there. So that's kind of where I'm at. What I'm thinking is uh, maybe my choke coils need to be of a, a higher current potential. You'll put more power in. But it's interesting that you can actually see, you know, it's a positive. DC voltage directly at the cell, and it does does make gas. So it's more than it did before. 
Alright, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.